Hello Antichrist Magazine TV, this is Tim Timo from Timo. Meaning behind the band name Timo, um, I played in a progressive rock band around 2013 and the band broke up and I was devastated and I needed a new musical outlet so I started a project by myself called Timo. I wasn't very creative on the name of course, just after my last name. And then I uh, wrote some songs and then uh, our guitarist Nick Schwartz, our bassist Harlan Jacobs and our drummer Mark Dury joined in. And then uh, they put their own flavor into it and we became a full-on thrash band. And um, yeah, we stuck with the name Timo because we were already in the music scene. People already knew who we were and what the name was and uh, we didn't have the heart to change it. So whenever people ask, why your last name? I just say, well, Van Halen, that's uh, another example. But I promise I'm not egotistical, not 100%. A little bit about our new album, The Art of a Maniac. Well, we're very proud of it. It's definitely a step forward from Persian Reset. Uh, I think everyone will like it. If you're a big thrash fan, yeah, you definitely want this album in your catalog. Uh, we did. Uh, we worked with Andre Buzikov, who designed the artwork, and uh, it was just very nice to have Bob Ross on the cover. Like, we're very proud of it. Um, yeah, no, it's fast. Solos everywhere, aggressive vocals, double kick, everything you love about thrash. Like, you'll really enjoy this album. And it's out February 5th, 2022, this year of course, and um, it'll be available on all your favorite digital streaming platforms and uh, you can purchase CDs and pretty soon records through us. Talk about the lyrics on the release, uh, it varies from uh, self-destructive behavior, like topics of suicide, to um, mental health, of course, like uh, depression, to um, party drinking anthems, um, social media abuse, that's another one. There's definitely been a lot of that during the pandemic. How uh, everyone thinks they're so tough behind their uh, keyboards and then when they get face to face, they're nice to each other. So a lot of that, that's uh, Age of Deception, by the way, a single we released uh, just this week and I hope you're all enjoying it. Um, I don't want to spoil too much about it, but you'll have to check out the album and uh, I promise you'll enjoy it. A little bit about the album artwork. Uh, Again, Andre Buzikov designed it and did an amazing job. Um, and we knew we wanted to call the album The Art of a Maniac. And uh, immediately when I hear art, we automatically think uh, Bob Ross. And uh, we just had this idea of like, you know, friendly, positive Bob Ross in a post-apocalyptic setting. You know, just unhinged, nothing's going on. Um, happy little mistakes, you know, end of the world. So we thought that was kind of a cool contrast between Bob Ross and uh, the end of the world. And uh, we really liked the color scheme that uh, Andre Buzikov came up with, uh, the yellow and the green. It's uh, really proud of it. We feel like it really represents what the album's about and the sound of the album, of course. Why Rick and Morty? Why not? You know, it's a cartoon we all like. It's a really fresh, modern show. Um, on our last album we had a song called Killer Crom, and that was about Combopulous Michael, of course, and uh, this album follows the trend. It's about uh, Roy Carson, a life well lived, um, of course the Roy Carson project. And funny enough, that's from the same episode. We did not plan that, but Rick and Morty is just one of those shows that's there's endless possibilities. Like, we've always been big fans of that quantum theory, like parallel universe, alternate reality type thing, and uh, I feel like that's had a huge impact on the band. Um, yeah, you'll have to check out Roy Carson Project, I right? feel be very impressed. <laughs> At least I hope so, right? Do we think it's important to have a record deal or a label deal? Uh, well, labels, they have more reach. Like, I think it's important when you're starting out, if you can, um, get on with the company. Uh, you know, when you're submitting to festivals and everything like that, they'll probably take you more seriously if you're on a label. I could be wrong about this. Um, that's what we're finding, at least. Um, but if you're already really good at marketing yourself and you're a whiz on social media, that helps too. So I think it's kind of... really depends on who you are and what kind of band you are. Uh, some people are really good at marketing and some kind of lack... Uh, there's pros and cons to both. Like when you're doing it yourself, you have control of completely everything. If you're working with a the label, they have some pull and um, control over what you say and what you do, but they also have a bigger reach at the end of it. So 
I say it's good and bad. I think both, depending on your circumstances. Like, either is okay for me. Well, I personally, I got into music around uh, 2004. I just always wanted to play guitar. I started out on a PV reactor, PV version of a Telecaster. They're obsolete now. And I, uh, I immediately wanted to learn Metallica. I think Enter Sandman was the first song I learned. And then from there, I started learning Iron Maiden, Megadeth, Judas Priest, and of course, the gear started getting better. I you know, started to play Jackson guitars and uh, my martial amp and yeah, the rest took off and um, what got me into music, uh, you know, that was so long ago, I'm just trying to think. I've always been drawn towards the guitar. Um, I think hearing Metallica's Master Puppets album for the first time, that was the beginning of the end. I think a door shut behind that and I was just really inspired to learn all those songs and I, from there I just fell in deeper to guitar playing. And uh, as for vocals, I couldn't find anyone else to sing, so I decided it's to start singing myself. And uh, yeah, here we are. I hope it's doing okay. <laughs> if we could change anything about the music industry, uh, streaming platforms, if they could pay their artists more, that's one for sure. It's uh, really hard to make a living off of it now, just from streaming, you know, unless you're touring. Relentlessly, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, but that is, yeah, that's the one thing I'd change. Streaming, pay more. Hopefully, this gets out there. Epic fails during live performances. Oh, yeah. There's been times where we couldn't hear each other, and uh, actually, we were playing an instrumental one time, and uh, we couldn't hear each other at all, and then, you know, next thing, someone's playing another part, and then someone's playing this different part, and I'm playing some part, and, uh, yeah, it all just kind of fell apart. So we did have a little bit of a crowd in front of us. This was in the early days, and uh, right after we played that instrumental, everyone just left. We had them for a bit. It's just that bloody instrumental. And I have to say, that song was Flank to Frost from our last album, so you'll probably never hear that song the same ever again. Any new music or movies that have impressed us? Mm. New Music Hazard released an amazing album in uh, 2020. I'm getting my years mixed up during this pandemic. Delirium, really good album, check that out. Exodus' new album, amazing. Um, as for movies... I'm personally so behind, but everyone in the band's been talking about Spider-Man No Way Home. Apparently that's just amazing. I keep procrastinating to check it out. It's all been spoiled for me already. But, you know. Uh, yeah, on the movie front for me, nothing too crazy. I kind of always go back to the old stuff. Like, The Shining amazes me every time. There's just something about that movie that... I don't know. Weird. But it definitely rubs off on our lyrics. <laughs> a little bit about our local music scene. Uh, there's a lot of talent, you know. It's, we really have to practice to keep up. <laughs> you know, some good bands like Juliet Ruin, Striker, uh, Breaking the Silent, uh, uh, Ravage Red. The list can go on and on. You can find all these bands linked with our band page. They'll come up and be recommended. Uh, definitely check out, like, just Alberta in general. Like, it's Loud as Hell Festival. They, it's a festival on Drum Heller in Alberta that they put on every year. and. Um, yeah, if you just look at those posters, check out all those bands. Like, they're just amazing. We uh, played there for the first time uh, just this past year in 2021, and we had a blast. I mean, there, there's some amazing talent on those rosters. So what are the future plans for Time? Oh, well, first off, we're going to release this album on February 5th, no matter what happens. And then uh, once this Omicron wave ends, we'll uh, get to playing as many shows as possible. We hope to get over to Europe and South America, whole world eventually. And um, yeah, just promote it and just play as many shows as possible. Make up for lost time over this pandemic. We got a few shows in last year, but you know, Omicron. And then uh, from there, yeah, we'll see what happens. Probably more music after that and just uh, the cycle will continue, but we hope to reach a bigger audience and uh, connect with as many people as possible and we'll see you out there.